Hi everybody, I'm here at a Rainforest Cafe, and let me just say, I can't wait to not order food. It's it's not very good. I'm, I'm really just here for the environment, to stick my head into Tracy Tree, and maybe consider the possibility of getting safari fries, and making other references like that. Really though, I'm just waiting for the thunderstorm to start so I can leave. But until then... Juice boxes. They're a funny thing that have been around for quite a while, and there's no doubt about that, but when I think of the top brands, I think of Kool-Aid, and then I especially think about Capri Suns. These are the most popular juice boxes in the world. You can't really go wrong with them. They're pretty good at what they do, and you can complain about them, but you probably shouldn't. Because what if I told you that in commercial land, these little liquid boxes are some of the most dangerous things that could possibly exist. And the fact they weren't outlawed within a week, let alone decades, is absolutely insane if you spend more than five minutes looking into them. Capri Suns, and honestly all juice boxes, have the firepower to end billions of lives within these ads, and it's astounding that nothing is done about it. But first off, we need some context. Namely, that Capri Suns have been around for a little over 50 years, but they wouldn't get commercials until about the 80s, and more prominently in the 90s. The name's based off of the Italian island Capri for being a pretty popular vacation destination. The juice box people also wanted the brand to be connected by playing outside and having a great time, which is why a lot of early commercials revolve around sports. They also show this in the commercials by liquefying the local children. Early on, I guess the juice box children got matrixed or something because how they mess with reality and can summon Capri Suns at will, it, 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 it's really about as weird as it is kind of nifty. Overall, not too much bad I can say about this era other than these kids are pretty cool. But then, something happened. Something happened and absolutely decimated the Capri Sun scale. The local children of the world quickly fell into the mercy of the pouch. To respect the pouch is to gain its trust, to become a Matrix man, to become a cool skateboarding kid, to turn into Mercury at will. But it's when you disrespect the pouch, that's when the horror starts. That is when the lives of our youth are shriveled into disgusting amalgamations for little to no justification. The respect the pouch campaign lies in infamy in my eyes. And the concept is simple enough. At least one kid will be chugging down some Capri Sun while doing some sort of mundane activity. Then they'll get the idea to do something with the juice box involving whatever the activity the kid happens to be doing, like hitting it with a bat or digging it into some sand. And then the hell spawn of the funny juice is truly unleashed. If anyone deliberately chooses to go out of their way to disrespect the pouch in any capacity, it utilizes its sentience to determine an appropriate punishment that's ironically connected to whatever torture method was conducted on the juice box. If you stab the straw in the wrong spot, your blood starts leaking from you. If you pogo on it, you turn it into one of those playground thingies that I forgot the name of. And if you run over it with an RC car, then have fun not having bones, idiot. Interestingly enough though, the Capri Sun can actually punish exclusively the individuals who cause the disrespect. One kid in the commercial tries treating it like a whoopee cushion to ethically prank their friend. Yeah, yeah, that'll teach them. Make them sit on a used juice box. That's so, that's so funny, dude. That, that's such a good prank. But then the Capri Sun calls the kid cringe and turns him into this. And I don't, I don't like that. They look, they look like ground beef. Fun fact about Capri Suns too. About 7 billion of them get sold a year. And how the Fettuccine Alfredo Frick, are these even legal? Like even after a couple of confirmed cases of them being connected to stuff like big head mode, inverted limbs, anamorphosis, becoming a background character in Flapjack. What do you do? In general, I don't really think that becoming an X-Men is a bad thing per se. I just feel like this is morally wrong. To have this be a thing that your product can do. To have no recalls or lawsuits, to have the world quite literally accept this man-made horror beyond my comprehension is a bit much. However, to make up for this, if you for any reason become any of the disrespected peeps who fall a victim to this hellish device, you get to live in a content creator house with all the other mutated kids according to this short-lived animated series. Yeah, so the disrespectoid stuff are what happen when you try to profit off of the horrible tragedies you caused. Alongside the disrespecting campaign, there was an attempt to profit off these characters with stuff like games, and especially this show. Now all of these episodes feature at least one of the ten and a half characters dealing with some sort of silly situation from their silly situation. We see the legs of one of the kids' dads, so I'd assume the parents were all okay with it. They probably just said stuff like, well little Billy, you should have respected the pouch, what can we say, You're, this is your life now. I don't really care. They, they all live with each other anyway. 
This is a stupid show. I I don't really like it. There is one character, Handlebar Harry, that I specifically want to look at because the episode about him sees him witnessing all the other kids, so he then wants his own superpowers, which means he voluntarily chooses to modify himself. And this is the point where I simply just gave up trying to make any logical sense of how any of the world works. I sat down, I talked to my therapist that I don't have, and I said, this is enough for me. Throughout the 2000s, this juice box was capable of amalgamating children, but also nobody does anything about it. But also people voluntarily disrespect it to transform themselves? And the company decided to profit off of this? Profit off the stuff they caused? When will it end? When will this horrible, horrible awfulness end? The 2010s, of course. Oh, a few of the commercials have the context of parents not buying their Capri Suns for their kids. I wonder why. Unfortunately, the Capri Suns fluids must have had, like, chemicals or taken over the kiddos as some sort of parasite, because now they've become master negotiators by putting themselves in bad situations, basically holding themselves for juice box ransom. This isn't anything new in the juice box world. The Kool-Aid man has been polluting waters and bending all the Kool-Aid at will to control the children of the world. We shouldn't be shocked. These things are capable of destroying every Everything you know and love. Following that, I would say Capri Suns have also lost their ability to alter DNA, but instead basically gained reality warping powers. In this era, even holding a Capri Sun will attract the goofiest, wackiest, downright unfathomable events comprehensible. On several occasions, we see aliens show up one time they're looking for their cat, and another time they crown this one kid the king of Earth. In a different commercial, a cyborg bear shows up. They deem it the cyber, and then it starts like eating kids or whatever, until this brave soldier enters the front line and one shots it with a single stab with the plastic straw. Now I have several questions about that. There's a few possible implications behind this specific commercial. One, this kid is strong enough or has enough precision to pierce through the metal of the cyber. Based on the negotiation skills of the children in the verse, I wouldn't be shocked. Two, the straw is strong enough to pierce through metals. This is a problem because then these straws are basically sharper than knives, and even then, that wouldn't be the most dangerous thing a Capri Sun has in its skill set. 3. The Psy Bear is weak as hell. I have a problem seeing this because a bear is already pretty strong. Even if it's a robot that simply looks like a bear, it was programmed to destroy this child, and yet it failed to a plastic straw. And regardless, we should still be concerned about any and all of these possibilities even having a chance of existing, along with how casual everyone is about it. In fact, looking at the official YouTube channel, the higher-ups responsible for the distribution of Capri Suns on a global scale take pride in how healthy it is for kids, and how they're a perfectly safe drink and all that stuff, but like... Are you sure about that? There has been dozens of commercials that realistically would encourage the opposite. Like if you tell the children of the world in a 30 second commercial not to put forks in electrical outlets or else they'll turn into a random animal, hate to break it to you, more kids would put forks in electrical outlets. You are encouraging these. Stop encouraging kids to break your Capri Sun. Stop, stop doing all of this gunk. That's, th this is clearly not a good thing. And in the possibility that these occurrences actually happen, I feel like the, either the little hobgoblins would be horrified to go near a Capri Sun, or go and perfectly try and concoct the best mutation possible. I know I did, I did both, and I thought by getting a bird to grab or peck a Capri Sun, I'd get like wings and shit. So, th this is stupid. You are endangering your fan base. This is also where I discovered in the YouTube channel that they have their own mascots, namely this one named Jack Capri, who's like this little kid extraordinaire. There's been several attempts to make a mascot on the same level of other food mascots, and they have failed several times already. This is one of those failures. We also got the Big Pouch Man, a master of infiltration. He usually shows up and helps high schoolers out with their personal problems, like a driver's test or talking to a girl at a party. I would say other than the failed social media accounts, I want to be friends with him. Him. Like genuinely, he's a very good motivational speaker, and he has a supernatural power level. In the skydiving one, where a kid's justifiably horrified of jumping out of plane, he somehow flies into the plane without a parachute. I don't care what you say. That is so raw, and he's an icon. Tragically, we don't see this guy anymore, but the newest mascot, oh, oh the new mascot sure does exist. Capri Suns in universe have evolved from body horror non-fatal landmines to actual biological life capable of speech, literacy, and physical activity. In addition, the Caprinus sunnis now have eyes and teeth. I would assume it has organs and bones and stuff, but... Where? And more so, why does this need to exist? They're disgusting to even think about. I don't want to be around any of them. I originally thought this could be maybe some sort of disrespect toy. I thought that would make sense. Maybe a kid smashed two Capri Suns together and became this. But no. 
living and moving Capri Suns have been around the world for years now. Governments worldwide are trying to capture them. How have they not been recalled? They can't be recalled. They're their own life. They're refusing to be recalled. Now there's non-Capri Sun drinks that are alive. But can you drink them? Would they be happy being drank? Or would it be a slow and painful process? Somehow they have the access to both the real world and their own little one. And there's several times where we can see what I would assume are women Capri Suns. So these have got to be a species of some sort. We just need to ask, what could all of this mean? Why has everything changed in this way? And then not only that, where do you include the collab Capri Suns? Like the minions. Is it a big deal to have a minion tattooed to your body forever with no choice? Also, what's with the ranges of sizes they can be? There's been tiny ones the same size as a regular Capri Sun. And then there's ones including the giant minion one. One that's, uh, one that's attracting other minions. Hi, and how is there a minion Capri Sun? And that's all there is. Just as a recap, Capri Suns and their commercials have gone from cool ads about doing sports and playing outside to drinking them, allowing people to become Lawrence Fishburne and also liquefy, to sentient judges of morality that horribly punish children who realistically don't know better, to the main base of a content house, to a deus ex machina machine that shoots whatever's convenient at that given moment, to a collection of failed mascots of wacky characters, to full, undisputable life, to goddamn reproduction with minions. Minions are freaks. We have seen these things and what they do in the movies, but be entirely honest, are you shocked? In fact, why are you shocked about any of this? In commercial land, juice boxes are some of the most high risk products on the market. The Kool-Aid man has the power to kill trillions. Juice boxes just end lives. But whatever you wanna think, just know I won't be drinking any Capri Suns if they have a face on them. Because if they look like this while I'm drinking on them, I feel like I'd be drinking the blood of a small frail animal. And at that point, I'd rather it be a possum or a squirrel. That was a lot. But anyway, these safari fries are exceptionally average, and that'll do it. Join me next time when I... Ooh, there's the thunderstorm. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm clocking out. Bye, bye everybody!